So you want to invest in cryptocurrencies so you can make a million dollars. Of course you want to invest in cryptocurrencies. It's the future of money. But most of you have no idea what you're talking about or doing and you know it, right? Maybe you don't really understand the technology. Maybe you don't get the whole blockchain thing. Well, in this video, I'm going to give you an easy option, an easy way to understand cryptocurrencies, understand the technology, understand why these currencies have value and it's free, 100% free. All you have to do is your due diligence, which is the most important thing. A lot of people don't want me to make these type of videos, but it's the people that sit here, watch this, apply it in their investment strategy that are gonna make money in the long run. So in this video, I'm gonna be talking about white papers, how to read them and how to use them in your investment strategy. Keep watching. What's going on everybody? Alex back with another cryptocurrency video and today we're going to be talking about white papers. Now I know it sounds boring, but white papers are very, very important. Hopefully you got into cryptocurrency because you believe in a technology. Hopefully you didn't get into cryptocurrency to make a quick buck. And in this video, I'm going to show you guys exactly how you can use these white papers to not only understand it, but to give yourself confidence in the number one most volatile market in the world. I don't know if that's a fact, but it is very volatile. Everybody knows that. OK, so I'm going to go through it. But before we get started, guys, my name is Alex. I talk about cryptocurrency and blockchain technology and Internet entrepreneurship. If you are looking to get the latest and greatest videos on how to make money in these spaces, do me a favor. Hit that subscribe button as well as the push notification bell so you can get the videos first. And if I give you some type of value, do me a favor, like this video so that it can help me on the Google search algorithm, not the Google well, maybe the Google. But YouTube search algorithm. Thanks for watching, guys. So let's jump right into it. Bitcoin, a peer to peer electronic cash system. Why did I bring up the Bitcoin white paper? Well, all white papers derived from Bitcoin. Okay, so if you are getting into EOS or if you're getting into XRP, understand that the first white paper was Bitcoin. So, yes. You know, you might not be a Bitcoin maximalist. Maybe you don't believe in Bitcoin. Maybe you think it's slow. Whatever the case may be, Bitcoin almost owns 68% of the market. So it is somewhat established. It is, it is the highest, you know, when it comes to dominance, it has the majority of the money into it. So if anything, this is the best white paper and all white papers should look after this one and try to be like this one. And we've seen it be like in recent history, we've seen things like Ravencoin, Gringcoin that are very close to Bitcoin that are doing well for that reason. The whole cryptocurrency community seems to understand and agree on the fact that Bitcoin's good. OK, I don't care what CNBC says. I don't care with any of these news outlets or any of these, you know, kind of people that are, in my opinion, not really looking at the reality of things. Right. They're not really looking at cryptocurrency as collectibles. They're looking at it from the technology standpoint, which is good and, and which is uh, true. And that's why you're watching this video. But Bitcoin's Bitcoin, man. Bitcoin's 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 Bitcoin. Bitcoin's Bitcoin. All right, that's it. But look. This is the white paper of all white papers. So we need to derive our knowledge from this white paper. OK, so I'm going to I was going to read the abstract, but it's a little bit complicated. When I'm reading a white paper, I typically go through the abstract, go through the introduction. When it starts getting into transactions, I don't really try or like in general, like when it starts getting Cody, I don't try to read and understand the code because now you should eventually like really get into it. but. It's just a little difficult and it can kind of like sway you to not doing it. It could discourage you. So I don't want you guys to get too crazy. What you need to do is read the abstract, read the introduction and then read the conclusion. OK, skim through these paragraphs. Maybe you don't understand all this code stuff and I understand it a little bit. I don't even understand it to this day. I don't even understand it that much. Right. But it's good to kind of skim it so you understand like, OK, all right, what is proof of work? Right. What is the timestamp? When you when you see these words coming up later, you'll you'll get it and it will be a lot easier. Right. The more work you put in, the more work you get out. Right, guys. As simple as that. Due diligence. Right. I'm going to read the introduction for you guys just because I know a lot of you have not re read the ultimate white paper. So at least you get something out of this video. Right. Because 
some of you are not going to do this i highly recommend you guys pull up the bitcoin white paper and read it 10 times read it because this is the future of money and the next internet infrastructure basically okay you would be way ahead of the curve if you just did that if you just did that you'd be way ahead of the curve but i'm gonna read this for you guys okay commerce on the internet has come to rely almost exclusively on financial institutions serving as thir trusted third parties to process electronic payments while the system works well enough for most transactions it still suffers from the inherent weakness of a trust-based model. This is why, okay, just a little comment here. This is why Bitcoin is worth so much money because they have produced artificial trust. It's artificial, guys. There's no human error involved. Completely non-reversible transactions are not really possible since financial institutions cannot avoid mediating disputes. The cost of mediation increased transaction costs, limiting the minimal practical transaction size and cutting off the possibility for small casual transaction. And there is a broader cost and a loss of ability to make non-reversible payments for non-reversible services, which is funny they say that, right? Where they're talking about the transaction size because even though Bitcoin is one of the cheaper when it comes to sending money, like for example, if I want to send, you know, my aunt a hundred bucks across the world, it would cost like $5 in Bitcoin. But there's a lot of cryptocurrencies now that would be less than like 10 cents to do that. Um, so it's funny how they're talking about, you know, the transaction size and all that stuff, but they're like one of the worst when it comes to that, that now people are looking at Bitcoin as a store of value, right? So let's keep reading. With the possibility of reversal, the need for trust spreads. Merchants must be weary of their customers, hassling them for more information than they would otherwise need. A certain percentage of fraud is acceptable and unavoidable. These costs and payments uncertainties can be avoided in person by physical currency, but no mechanism exists to make payments over communications channels without a trusted party. What is needed is an electronic payment system based on cryptographic proof instead of trust, allowing any two willing parties to transact directly with each other without the need for trusted third party. So what they mean by that is like, guys, I don't know if you've ever like zelled someone money or you sent it through PayPal or you sent money in any way, like you wired cash. You have to understand that all these methods of sending money require a third party. This is what they mean by trustless. So when I send, you know, you a hundred dollars worth of paypal money right i trust paypal to give you the money okay with bitcoin and cryptocurrencies there is no third party bitcoin is the third party and it's all automatic and the code's transparent and people have verified it right so it does it itself without needing that paypal because we've seen a lot of situations where like someone can get banned off paypal and they can never use it again right or they can do something, whatever the case is, guys, humans make errors, right? So when you take out the human error, things get, you know, a lot better. And that's why, you know, we see uh, Bitcoin almost breaking 12K. By the way, guys, before Bitcoin even took off, it was like a 9,800. On my Instagram, I called Bitcoin to 15K. I said there was a 97% chance Bitcoin's going to go to 15K. So go in the description below. Make sure to follow me on Instagram because I, po I post content there that I wouldn't post on YouTube. So that's like the behind the scenes. Go, go check that out. Transactions that are computationally impractical to reverse would protect sellers from fraud. The routine escrow mechanisms could easily be impl implemented to protect buyers. In this paper, we've proposed a solution to double spending problem using a peer-to-peer -peer distributed time spam server to generate computational proof of the chronological order of transactions. The system is secure as long as an honest nodes collectively control the CPU power to any cooperating group of attacking nodes. You know, it's funny, uh, this, they say CPU power, but now it's more like GPU power and then ASIC power. <laughs> but like, you can see how early this is. You can see like, guys, this is like the first white paper. They were talking about CPUs. At one point, you can mine Bitcoin with CPU. You can't do that no more. It's too, too many people are trying to mine Bitcoin. So you guys understand that like what they're trying to solve here is very simple. They're trying to solve sending money on a, a news channel, right? Whether that's the Internet, whatever, social media now with basic attention token. They're trying to send money over the Internet 
And the only way to do that is to not have a trusted third party because they can basically do what they want. People can, it's like they said, fraud. Um, it costs money to verify transactions physically like a person. With the, with the blockchain, it's a lot cheaper, a lot, a lot more efficient. That is what Bitcoin is trying to solve. Now, there's other white papers, right? So a whole bunch of other cryptocurrencies, a whole bunch of other cryptocurrencies. One I'm gonna go to, because I like it a lot, is Basic Attention Token. Definitely one of my, one of my top 10 picks um, in cryptocurrencies. So I'm just gonna go over to their website and let's pull up their white paper. And I'm gonna read something off their white paper because I think it's very, 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 you know, important to understand right so like you can see their white paper is a little bit more thorough they have 37 pages guys read the abstract read the intro look introduction value proposition this is one of the most important things because this is like what i told you guys all these cryptocurrencies have a value proposition the value derives from somewhere so let's read this really quickly we propose that basic attention token as a token of exchange and a secure anonymous opt-in advertising system based in the browser and a mobile app web view. The basic attention token system provides users a strong privacy and security when viewing advertisements, improving relevance and performance and sharing of tokens, publishers, improved revenue, better reporting and less fraud, advertisers, less expensive customer attention, less fraud and be better attribution attention has been widely recognized as a commodity like wheat pork bellies and crude oil <laughs> existing industries have long depended on it to drive sales and the new industries of the 20th century turned into a form of currency they could mint beginning with the radio each new medium would attain its commercial viability through the resale of what attention can be captured in exchange for its free content so they're basically trying to monetize attention. They're saying that there's a problem in the advertising inter industry, as you, as you can see here, ad tech. It's not efficient. Um, I would highly recommend you guys read this, um, but like they give you all types of really cool analytics, right? So like they'll say, for example, I've read this like a while ago. Um, like right here is one of them, right? So it says, together they claim, or it says, the perfect storm for publishers has only gotten worse over the last few years as Google and Facebook have taken more share of the advertising revenues. Together they claim 73% of all online digital ad revenue and an astonishing 99% of all growth from 2015 to 2016 and total US online budget. That's, that's crazy. They have all types of like, that's why I like this because they'll give you figures. They'll understand, they'll be like, hey, the advertising is this big, right? So like they're even talking about here, the, the article noted that researchers concluded that advertising accounts for half of all the data used by publisher pages loaded over mobile data networks. During the test, the average smartphone user consumes 1.8 gigabytes a month based on carrier plans for two gigabytes. That means on average, users end up paying $23 a month to download ads, trackers, scripts, and other related data. So if you guys don't know what Brave Browser is, there's a link in the description below. You definitely need to check it out. But basically, the Brave Browser is offering an opportunity for people to either block ads or get paid for ads. So I don't know if you guys see my YouTube videos, ads will come up, everybody's YouTube video, ads come up, you either skip it or you watch it, right? So in this case, I get paid. So like, for example, if you click here, it shows you, look, so it blocks trackers, it blocks ads, it blocks upgrades and it saved me about 40 minutes. I've only been using this broader browser for about three weeks, four weeks at most. And it's saving like time in my life. That's going to add up over time. Not only does brave browser, you know, use less resources than Google Chrome, but it's actually like the same thing as Google Chrome. Plus it has a Tor browser built in. If you don't know what a Tor browser is, you can ser search the deep web, go through the deep web with the Tor browser. And it also has like a bit torrent, a torrent, exporter so if you ever get torrents like movies and stuff like that it's actually built into the browser this browser is in my opinion the ultimate it kills google chrome um you have all the capabilities of google chrome but you can get paid for watching ads you or you could just block the ads and just never like watch ads right ever again like i'm talking about on youtube i know you guys for every two to three videos you're getting hit hit on ads you could just block it and this was like the value proposition and this is why I like basic attention so much. I got all the information from the white paper. I don't need to do research. I just need to understand like, what's the technology? What is it solving? Is this a real problem in my life? Is this something I can relate to? And then you can go look up and research this stuff in other places, right? 
really guys everything in cryptocurrency is accessible to you guys like this is all free stuff they have it on their websites right the reason why people don't do this the reason why people don't take the time to read a white paper is typically because they have attention problems right maybe that's you maybe you don't want to sit here and read a 37 page document maybe you don't want to understand this maybe you rather listen to somebody on youtube telling you what to buy and it makes it that much easier for you right but the value is created and not how much money you make it's what you know right what it, what have you experienced right because let's say for example i buy a basic attention token for like what 23 cents and then it blows up to a dollar and then you sell it but what about for the next couple of years what if it blows up to ten dollars you just missed out on a huge opportunity right so i don't want you guys to just listen to people on the internet i want you to draw your own conclusions and build your own experiences so that you can use those experiences to make better decisions in your life in general right i'm not trying to make this like a whole thing i'm just saying guys like you need to if you have attention problems you need to solve it i've had attention problems like maybe you need to do some meditation or maybe you should try some pure himalayan shilajit right i sell it right guys there's a lot of guys a lot of cryptocurrency guys that you know kind of sell these worthless t-shirts i like to sell something that's actually usable like i actually use it on a day-to-day -day basis they say 50 percent of people are mineral deficient they say 50 percent of people in the united states are mineral deficient and if you have a mineral deficiency guys micronutrients are as important as macronutrients what are what is micro what is macro well macronutrients are basically like protein carbs and fats micronutrients is all the little uh nutrients that you usually get but the fact that modern agriculture has basically completely demolished our soil we don't get that much nutrients in foods like we used to back in the day so pure himalayan shilajit comes from the himalayan mountains 16,000 feet above sea level basically the best way to put it is that these jungles were eaten up by the himalayans when the himalayans was, was formed and you guys could watch this whole video explaining in definitely bigger detail than what i'm talking about here but these these jungles were eaten up and it was kind of made just like oil right over the thousands of years it was made and now they protrude from the mountains people take it it solves all different types of problems if you have concentration problems you don't want to read a white paper go check out Pure Himalayan Shilaji, it'll give you focus, non-jittery, sustainable energy. Basically, it solves the mineral deficiencies in your body. And micronutrients is just as important as macro. So if you're not eating enough protein, you feel horrible. Well, it's kind of the same thing with micronutrients. So go ahead and check that out, guys. This is gonna help you out with your focus and attention and stuff like that. And guys, definitely your favorite coins. If you have 50 or more dollars in this coin, go read the white paper. It'll give you an understanding of the whole scope of this technology and like what we are doing in this cryptocurrency space in general and it'll teach you a lot of things like when i read this white paper it taught me about the average I, I used to advertise on facebook google youtube and spending hundreds if not thousands of dollars advertising and i didn't even understand all this fraud right so there's a whole bunch of fraud in advertisements there's a whole bunch of just inefficiencies that can be solved with blockchain technology and brave browser is doing it guys but that's it for this video if you like the quality of this content hit like if you don't leave some constructive criticism subscribe for more video updates and like i always say if you don't get with it you will get left behind thanks for watching the video